Okay, in the last video, we talked about how you can do gradients in Illustrator and individual colors for your paths in Illustrator. And so it stands to reason that if you can do that, you can also uh, do your own drop shadow within Illustrator, right? It's not as easy as a layer style in Photoshop. So let me show you what, what I would do. You take your gradient, and I'm going to just do my linear gradient here, and I copy it. Command C, lock, lock, turn off, go to the top layer, and then edit, paste in place. And now I'm going to take that gradient and I'm going to change its angle so it's not lit from the bottom, but rather lit from the top. So I'm going to do negative 120. And then I am going to make the opacity of the white zero. And I'm going to move the black in a little bit and make its opacity about 80. Then I'm going to add a black opacity that tapers down to zero. And I can add another one that I bring up to, let's say, 70%. Right. and I can figure out exactly the effect I want. This would be almost kind of like a, a metal effect on the color. Right. A lot more subtle. Now as a drop shadow, what can I do with it? And I kind of like that. I like that enough I can dim this transparency a little bit. And so just everything feels customized, right? Okay, but now what I what can I do with that shadow? That gradient. Well, I can also move it underneath. So I'm going to copy it, make a new layer, like I've been doing, edit, paste in place. But now move it underneath my other layers, and then use the large selection tool and push and pull it. to be a drop shadow, you know, just a subtle drop underneath. Now there are dangers to building in a drop shadow to your EPS file. That means it's just always there. So I actually prefer to, to always do it within um, Photoshop as a layer style because little things like this happen that you would have to fix. Like I'd have to take this point because it's a little weird and then line it back up so it feels like a shadow instead of just as a cutout. And I'd have to find that in all places and that's annoying. Here it doesn't matter so much because it fades to white or fades to not even white to transparent, right? So let's redo that. So the beauty of doing it in Illustrator though is you can always just turn it off. And now I'm going to save it. Well, I'll save it with it on and you'll see what it is and what it isn't. And then, of course, I can turn off individual <laughs> ones here as well. So only keep the drop shadows I think are useful. Let's just keep them all and let's see what we get. Okay, so now if we're happy with it, how do we save it? Oh, I did something there. Move that back. Huh. Why is that up there? I think that's a shape I had a long time ago. Yeah, I'll just, okay. Interesting. Huh. 
There we go. I got it back. Okay. So now I'm going to take these. I'm going to take this whole thing and save it as an EPS with only the things showing I want, right? So now I have all these different color variations showing. And that EPS, I want to save to the desktop. I'm going to keep all the defaults, right? And then just like before, I'm not going to open up the EPS in Photoshop. Instead, I'm going to open up Photoshop, right? And I already have a Photoshop file for this, but if I were doing it from scratch, I would open it up in Photoshop. I'm trying to find my Photoshop file. There it is. And I would um, open it up to be 8 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. And I would drag my EPS in as a smart object, and I would size it and keep it as a vector. But I already have a file where I've done that. Now I'm just going to add my, my Illustrator colored version in. And it will give me a lot of options. Come on, Photoshop. And I can quit Illustrator now. But I, I have a feeling I'm not going to like what it looks like with this Adobe Illustrator drop shadow. So I might resave it as an EPS without that drop shadow. So it's good to be able to work between Photoshop and Illustrator. And in order to print something through Illustrator, that's always important to be able to work between. And the key is to keep it as a smart object. Ah, uh, Photoshop, you're killing me. So slow. All right, it's opening up. So here we have already the Photoshop file that is eight by 10 inches at 350 pixels per inch. It is portrait format because my logo is taller than it is wide. And I already have uh, my color solutions and my offset solutions all as layer styles, right? And I have them on different backgrounds. So on white, they look like that. And then with color, it looks like that. And then on black, it looks like that, it still shows up. On gray, it looks like that, it still shows up. And I can play with different types of offsets, different types of effects. So now I'm going to bring in my new one. I need to size it to match. Use my arrow keys. And Photoshop will help you kind of lock it in. Get it sized. So you can see that that drop shadow now. It's kind of interesting on the different effects. And if I turn all those effects off, this is what it looks like on gray. This is what it looks like on black. It's kind of nice, right? And this is what it looks like on white. So now, what if I want to just try these effects on it? Let's say those effects or these effects. Well, then all I need to do is duplicate the layer that has the effects I want, Command-J, and then drag and drop the effects onto my new vector and then delete that duplicate. And now those effects are part of my new vector. The problem is the shapes are a little crazy because those effects are rendered off of that drop shadow shape. And now my drop shadow has a drop shadow, which is actually kind of nice. And so I think I like that and I'm just going to dim it a little bit and shrink it a little bit so I can change the effects here. And then in terms of the stroke, let's change that so it's not so bold 
Let's take it way down. Looks cleaner, more sophisticated. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I don't love that. So let me just expand it a tiny bit more so it gets rid of that. So at 40 pixels. And then I can play with bevel and emboss. But I'm just going to texture it and I'm going to take, let's see, I'm just going to emboss. No, let's see. I don't know that I want it at all. There we go. Soften it a whole lot. So playing with these different settings, you can find exactly what you want and kind of dial it in. Oh, but you see, I don't like that there. So there's always little things that you might decide you want or don't want. So I wanted to go to 40. I want a texture. So then take that way down. Soften it. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with that. And so now you check it and make sure it looks good on all the backgrounds. All right. It's hard because on black, I like it without the stroke. But I need that stroke for the others. And on white, it doesn't matter so much to have it. But I might decide the best print is like this. And so that's what I'll save. And then I'm going to say, um, for printing, I'm going to save it as a TIFF file. And I'll show you that later. But for submitting to PhotoBucket, for online, I'm going to turn off the background and save it as a PNG. And this is going to be my third option for my color logo. Not that you need that many. To the desktop. But it's to show what coloring within Illustrator can do for you. And then we bring it into photo bucket. Oh, we never did the retro effect in Illustrator. I can try to show that to you quickly. And you can do this with any kind of texture you bring in. So I'm going to lock all my layers, put a new layer on top, and I'm going to go to window, and I'm going to go to symbols, and I'm going to go to the library and artistic textures, and I'm going to go to charcoal. Right? Back. And then I'm going to paint with that charcoal. Bring it on. Close these. And now with that charcoal, I'm just going to stretch it just like it's a texture fill with the large selection tool. That was my mistake. And stretch it over my image. And I can repeat it over and over again, but this will give it kind of a, 